In Ukraine, there's new fighting reported around the city of Bakhmut, and Russia claims to have pushed back a large Ukrainian offensive in the country's southeast yesterday. Our Deborah Pata has the latest on the war from the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv. This is a video released by Russia's Ministry of Defense claiming to show its troops repelling a Ukrainian advance in the eastern Donetsk region. We can't verify this, and Kyiv has consistently sent mixed signals, perhaps a military tactic in itself. The latest being this, a video released over the weekend with the tagline, Plans Love Silence. Ukrainian soldiers are seen urging operational secrecy around any talk of a major and much-anticipated counteroffensive. Across the border in Russia, a new front line has opened up. Anti-Kremlin militia fighting alongside Ukraine have stepped up attacks in the Belgorod region. The daily hardships Ukrainians have become so accustomed to now being felt by thousands of Russians who've taken refuge in a temporary shelter. We're trying to be strong, said Irina Berlakova, because we have children who give us the incentive to carry on. And it is children who are once again the center of yet another Russian missile attack in the early hours of Sunday morning, this time in the Ukrainian city of Dnipro. Rescuers working frantically overnight brought the devastating news that at least five children were injured in this attack and a two-year-old girl was killed as she slept with her mother, who's fighting for her own life in hospital. President Zelensky said over the weekend at least 500 children have been killed in the war today. Children, he added, who could have become scholars, artists or sports champions. Vlad and Marie. Deborah, thank you. So for more on the Russian invasion, we want to bring in BBC uh, correspondent James Waterhouse. He's joining us from, from Kyiv. So, James, as, as, as has been happening throughout this whole conflict, both Moscow and Ukraine have put sort of their own narrative to things that are unfolding. But, you know, part of the challenge is that some of these areas, it's difficult to get to. It's difficult to verify what we're hearing. So are we, are we to believe Russia's narrative on this latest series of attacks? I think in the sense, when you look at all the things you've just seen there, when you look at the known fighting, where you look at that heightening of claim and counterclaim, as you say, where over the weekend we have Ukraine saying it's made marginal gains in two areas. Overnight, we've had Russia saying it's repelled now three major Ukrainian attacks, as it puts it, but they all failed uh, whilst inf inflicting heavy losses. I think if you take those words and known military movements, we can say on balance that Ukraine's long-awaited long -awaited, counteroffensive has indeed started. We know Ukrainian forces have been increasingly deployed across the south and east where this vast front line remains. So it does seem the Ukrainian wheels are in motion. Uh, but this has reminded me of her song last year when that uh, southern city was liberated. We're going to be drip-fed facts and we're going to be drip-fed access. It will take time to gain uh, entry to places should they be liberated, but it certainly seems at least that Ukraine is trying. So what can you tell us about this anticipated counteroffensive? Well, for Ukraine, it's become a, a political and military imperative <laughs> where it's received all of this Western weaponry from the U.S., where it is now, with the conditions improving, come time in the eyes of Kyiv to try and act because it wants to capitalise mm. on that existing political support uh, and ultimately achieve its goal of repelling Russia completely. But a lot needs to happen for them to achieve that goal. We're playing um, that video right now where Ukraine is basically asking people not to speak about the counteroffensive, which I thought was so interesting. I don't know if that happens other, other, in other conflict zones, but I thought it was an interesting message to send out. It absolutely is. And, and, and the, the communication strategy from Kiev never ceases to amaze. But just last week, the week before, it sent out a video showing Ukrainian soldiers with dramatic music saying, it is time to take back what is ours. Now, <laughs> when and how the counteroffensive was going to take place depended on what official you asked. Part of it, yes, is trying to signpost what it wants to do. But mostly it's trying to confuse each other. That's what Moscow's trying to do by showing this footage of 
Ukrainian tanks apparently getting blown up on a field. And that's what Ukraine is trying to do with these high production videos. They're right. trying to keep each other guessing. But eventually, when Ukraine makes its move, it'll be hard to hide. Indeed. James Waterhouse, thank you.